I was awesome. And uh, today's speaker is Mikola Wolchansky uh, with the talk on uh, point densities for Aratia flows. Please. Thank you. Can you hear me clearly? Yes. Good. So today we will continue the discussion of approximation, finite point approximation of finite point densities for Aratia flows. Uh, however, today uh, we will consider the case when drift is not trivial, and this, this is a continuation of the discussion from previous spring. This is work in progress, which means that the crash fall um, results still lacks one argument, but uh, should be there, and or it can be approached differently from the point to patient theory that we and we might speak about it in full. So, uh, very quick reminder in case someone, a new participant is here, we consider a collection of coalescing Brownian motions. So this is called a Brownian web. Uh, such Brownian motions start at any positive time from any point of the real line. They move independently until they meet, and they simply merge together. Uh, right. I wanted to fit the screen. Was it? So the version of the Brownian fab with drift was defined in 2007. Uh, there is a number of uh, somewhat fine problems related to defining this object properly as a random element in the proper field, but we will speak today mostly about finite dimensional distribution, and in this case it's a well-defined object in the sense that it enjoys time stationarity and independence on uh, disjoint time intervals. And every trajectory is now not just a Brownian motion itself, but now it also contains drift and the starting point as in the previous case. And here should be simply indicator that they are equal. So they uh, are independent before they meet. Uh, excuse me, uh, can you show us the uh, previous slide? Uh, the first one condition, uh, you uh, say that uh, uh, probability that X, H, S, R, oh, yes, okay. This was yes. the question. Yes, uh, it's based on the previous presentation, so sometimes I missed corrections. Unfortunately, I'm sorry. Uh, so we proceed as follows. We will recall some basic definitions that we need. It's the properties of the cardinal McGregor determinant that were crash fault for the previous talk and are also important for us. Then we recall what these endpoint densities are. And then we will discuss the main result and the proof. Uh, on this Robert will also discuss one result that has been mentioned to this seminar previously, an older result, but uh, its proof has never been presented here. And the idea behind this proof is important uh, to what I do today. So uh, we will revisit the proof of this result. So uh, references are uh, these two papers, so some calculation appeared on the thesis. If a result is taken from any of these sources, uh, I do not reference it. So the main object are correlation functions, uh, as physicists call them, or in point densities as mathematicians prefer uh, to call them. Uh, so we uh, define this function P, A, K, T, so this key point density of the right of flow with drift A, and it's simply defined in this manner. So we 
we consider all uh, surviving particles within the flow and take all uh, k tuples of distinct particles and sum over all such ensembles. So if f is indicator of um, some set, that is very well defined thing. And here then also stands simply A. Maybe uh, here it is good to mention that uh, we really will have a, a countable number of particles which survive uh, to the moment T. Yeah, so for any, yes, this is a very good remark. So for any brown uh, web, the number of particles that survive is countable at any positive time. Uh, if you consider yeah. particles that started uh, at time zero, for instance. Uh, yes, but uh, does the statement depend on uh, the shift? Maybe we can produce some very ugly shift uh, for which it is not true or not? Uh, or um, is, no, um, no, we do not, not because we have your uh, theorem. Uh, no, my, my theorem has some restriction on the shift. The drift, yes. Uh, yes, uh, okay, for the drift or shift. So uh, I will so mention. Let's... Maybe uh, it is good to mention that under some condition of the shift, we can guarantee that uh, it is countable and then define this point, point density. Yeah? yeah, so I will consider only bounded and Lipschitz continuous drift. Mm -hmm. And actually, the result uh, we just mentioned works just for Lipschitz drift. You don't need it to be bounded. So alternative uh, definition, which is basic for us, is here. So we simply tell, take the limit as delta goes to zero of the product of the number of particles that hit in some uh, neighborhood of xk. And there is a well-known result that for a right flow with zero drift, uh, uh, we can actually describe such densities in terms of some Fafian in process with a known kernel that can be uh, written in terms of Gaussian densities. We do not need this result, but this is uh, one of the most fundamental results about the behavior of Brownian. Uh, so if our drift is additionally bounded, uh, additionally to being Lipschitz continuous, such densities exist. It can be calculated not only as a product a mathematical expectation of products of the number of particles that hit this neighborhood, but also we can, as in the original idea in the singular Roger Stripe and Zabronsky, we can get rid of this number and place simply uh, the indicator that this number is greater than zero. So it's very unlikely that two particles hit a small interval simultaneously. Uh, so original proof from this paper uh, is uses the one idea of this paper plus some estimates, but today I also will discuss a different proof of this result. I will also need to define uh, other objects, which are called point densities that correspond to some coalescence scheme. So what is the coalescence scheme? We consider as a system of coalescing random processes, the Wiener processes with drift in our case. When we call, uh, pro provide an encoding on how they merge. In the sense that uh, we have this process Xi1, Xi n, we have the number of particles uh, that merged. So we have some heating times. So this is tau1, this is tau2. So tau one is the first time any coalescence appears. And then uh, we take the pair of processes that merged at time tau one and write down the number, uh, the smallest uh, number. So here j one is simply one. Now we uh, start numbering anew. So we have now three processes. Now merged the process two and the process three. And so the next meeting is described by J2 being equal to 
And here we get this. If there is no uh, coalescence, I will write that the scheme, the coalescence scheme is equal to uh, empty set. And then one can define analogs uh, of the capoint densities, but firstly, the one when we consider not the whole flow, the whole arctic flow, but the flow that start from a finite number of points, u1, un. So here we consider not the image of the whole flow, but only the trajectory that starts from a finite point of finite set of points. And now if we add also a condition that we observe precisely this coalescence scheme, we obtain another density that is n. So uh, n is the number of points uh, and the end of the interval. k is the number of starting points. And s is a coalescence scheme. So for one coalescence scheme, we can define uh, uh, consider a variety of cases. Now it's well known that such density exists, and obviously it enjoys a very simple relation between uh, the general nk point density that starts uh, that correspond to the finite dimensional motion that start from u and uh, densities of the same time, but conditional on some coalescence scheme. And last spring, I presented uh, this new result that which essentially says that if we consider, for instance, umg equal to j divided over divided by m, and consider uh, finite point densities that correspond to such sets. Of starting points, we can recover in the limit uh, the original key point density and point density, and we know precisely the speed of the density. So, in this case, delta m is simply one over m. So, this is we have the second order of convergence. And we even have the expression of this. Constant in terms of current McGregor determinants, for instance. And we will revisit this expression uh, later. So, uh, my idea today is to discuss the analog of this theorem, but in the case the drift is non trivial. I'm, I'm sorry, and what is your assumption on, uh, on the partitions? Uh, here, simply this. They should be, uh... but it's written strangely. It simply means that we cannot get the situation where we have one large and many smalls. So maybe there is umg minus umg plus one or something like that. Uh, yes, you're right. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. So a crucial point in all this series was properties of the current McGregor determinant, which is the density of the Wiener process that is killed upon uh, a collision. So we have a Wiener process that lives in a simplex. And if it hits bounded, it disappears. Then the transition probability function of this Wiener process is exactly this determinant, where x is the point where the process starts and y is the terminal point. Uh -huh. To work with such determinant, a, pro a proper way to work with such a de de this determinant is actually uh, to utilize its algebraic properties.
So uh, a standard and trivial decomposition is as follows. And then it can be rewritten in terms of the, some integral with respect to the hard measure on the unitary group, uh, which can be written explicitly, but it's quite lengthy. And this is a well-behaved function. And this is one of the determinants of this type. So they express how the determinant behaves, where as a terminal points or starting points become close enough. And uh, using this representation, uh, famous results provides estimates of the Carlin McGregor determinant. And in particular, it invokes some estimates for the point density for the whole erratic flow. So, as we see, uh, the up, for instance, the upper estimate for the correspondent integral in the previous slide is simply the product of Gaussian densities is a Gaussian density. Uh, a more direct uh, decomposition well, of uh, such determinant in terms, uh, actually, in terms of excuse me, can characters, you the previous slide? Uh, is as follows. This um, integral can be calculated explicitly, Nicola, where these are some so-called Schur polynomials that can be defined as follows and what is important they are still polynomials so even if we define with this function this is a polynomial in Nicola, one can you hear me? this is a very well behaved function and again this is uh, the function that gives very good properties of integrability in case someone is interested in such uh, results so, such a participant can consult either this or the previous talk. So the result I want to discuss today uh, goes as follows. We define the uniform partition of the zero interval, unit interval. We define a vector of these starting points and define the set of such points. And then we expect, uh, I still lack one argument here, unfortunately, but I will discuss it uh, in, in details. Uh, we have the same, the full analog of the result of the previous uh, of the case when there is no derivative. I'm sorry. Uh, and this constant should be expressible. Ole, and ole. the sum of probabilities where we do not have any collisions in our system. Where x epsilon uh, this should be y x epsilon. Ole. Y epsilon and simply Он просто не слышит. Um, как y1, y1 plus epsilon, y2, y2 plus epsilon, and so on. So here we have this epsilon to the power of minus n. And uh, we have the situation that these points are covered by exactly one interval of this type. And all other intervals of such type do not cover these points. Hello? Nikolai, вас вы просто нас не слышите. Я хотел там вопрос задать. А, и сейчас я попытаюсь что-то сделать. Can you hear me now? Uh, I, I can hear you, but oh, uh, can, good. Can I'm you sorry. Hear me? Yeah, yeah, now I can. Okay, uh, please, uh, can you uh, just go back uh, maybe three slides uh, when you uh, just formulate uh, estimation for this point density? Oh, okay, this one. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, is it uh, so difficult to have such estimation? Uh, it is, uh, I think it just means that uh, all particles survive uh, up to the moment uh, T uh, or something. 
or it is difficult to, to have this for uh, uh, endpoint density. I think it's not sufficient to consider simply the case when they all survived because it's a part of this density. Well, it is exactly this density. Mm -hmm. Okay, but... so it doesn't give any additional information, and this is done by like uh, working uh, with I this. See, I see that uh, this representation uh, is useful, uh, as we already discussed. But uh, okay, okay, let's let's go further. Let's use it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Thank it's you. not immediate, like mm -hmm. it's not something you can see from the start, like this. So mm -hmm. maybe this is not the main mm -hmm. achievement of mankind, but still this requires work. Mm -hmm. And this has a very deep alg algebraic meaning, because when I tried to obtain some estimates by myself, I was trying, this, this is like the sum, so I was trying to consider some cycles of this, but, uh, mm -hmm. but it so didn't work. Classify per, uh, permutation. Yeah, permutation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, but it didn't work. It was an improper way. You cannot do this. You need to work not with cycles, but with characters. And mm -hmm. this is exactly how it's written properly. So they use this representation theory to, to get the unitary group and so uh, This doesn't use directly, but it can be interpreted in such terms. Okay. Okay, thank you. you you're welcome. Sorry that I missed. So uh, let's speak about the proof. So I will use this uh, notation to define this uh, special half interval. Mm -hmm. NTA is the number of particles uh, in the system that started from X and hit the point I, and NBA, um, this, is, <laughs> this is the simply the number of particles of original full variety flow, the Brownian web that hit uh, the set A, and B, uh, denote the set of starting points. So we start from B here only. And again, calculate the number of the particles that survived and hit the set A. Uh, so uh, as a first step, we need to consider this expression and estimate it. Brazil back differentiation theorem. Why is written in this way? Because it can be then written as a, a probability, simply by the definition of the endpoint density whether with uh, a special uh, starting point that are uh, given or without any restriction of starting points. Here we, we have exactly the set of starting points of our partition. And uh, uh, before proceeding further, I need to recall some results about such density. So here we need to recall the Grisano theorem for zero flow. Right, uh, the result of exactly Professor Drogot. So, so we again consider some uh, set which is dense in our unit interval. And we consider uh, tau k, which is the first time a merging coalescence appears in the system of the first xa point u1 x a point u uh, k and then we consider two integrals where we integrate with respect to the arrival flow but only up to this moment so if we have this tree-like structure we consider stochastic integral over this part over this part over this part, over this part. So the, every part of this tree-like structure is used exactly one time. Such limits exist in L2. And moreover, the distribution of the whole Brownian web with drift is absolutely continuous with, with respect to the distribution of the variety flow with no drift here. And the same, a simplified version holds for finite dimensional models. 
Now we have a constructive approach uh, to finite point densities because instead of the original system collecting Brownian motion, we can start with simply a standard Brownian motion VU. So this subscript often always denotes the starting point. And we simply uh, define the rule for coalescence uh, in the sense that if two trajectories within VU meet or intersect immediately, we uh, let leave only uh, the ones that comes from below or the ones that comes from above. And we need to keep this rule for all collisions that happen. Then we have the corresponding meeting times theta k, and we can define this expression, uh, epsilon capital ATN. It depends on our uh, starting point and V. And the final dimensional motion the right of is noted is exactly the system. And obviously, this also falls. So instead of the original, uh, Exponent, special exponent, we can consider this. Uh, now we need to introduce Brownian bridges. So Brownian, Brownian bridges obtained if we have a Brownian process double K of T. The Brownian bridge is what happens when we correct it by subtracting some terms that depends on the terminal value in the sense that every Brownian bridge is a Gaussian process that starts from zero and hits zero. It has some nice properties. Uh, in particular, it satisfies its own well-defined uh, stochastic differential equation. And we could also consider uh, Brownian bridges as the starting point U and terminal point Y by simply adding these two linear terms. Now we can consider in the full analogy to the how meeting times for the process WU were introduced. So theta EG of U is the meeting time, meeting time for W, U, Y, and W, U, G. Not tilt W, but the original process that uh, was a system of independent Brownian motion with no coalescence. And then uh, we don't need uh, to discuss precisely the structure. We can define analogs of such system for this uh, Brownian bridges. And we can K, uh, define this E uh, Gothic as uh, some stochastic exponent with, res with integrals with respect to the Brownian bridge and some linear corrections. And this AK is actually the, this, for instance, this integrals is actually the integral over from the integral of A of this uh, Brownian bridge up to the moment where the collision happens. In the same way that uh, we uh, discarded those part of trajectories for the original arrative flow, for the original coalescing Brownian uh, motion, using the rule that only the trajectory that comes from above or below survives. And then this is actually a good function. So it's this method is continuous. Uh, it has nice integrability properties. And what's the most important, we can, instead of the uh, conditional distribution of the original expression, uh, we can simply calculate this. Mm. Uh, can someone s s say something so I'm sure that I can hear everyone? Mm, I think uh, 
we, we can hear you. Oh, I'm just checking because I have problems with sports, it seems. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, then, uh, in particular, using this representation, we can obtain this result. This is the gods of uh, Chansky, I don't know, maybe 2000, maybe 2002, I don't remember precisely. Uh, so, if you consider a coalescent scheme, we start with, like, processes W1, Wn, and in the end only the set of not all particles survive. So if we have something like this and something like this, so this is one, two, three, four, five, six. So I of S is simply one, and four, if we accept the rule that only the particle that comes from above survives, all others are discarded. And then using a superscript minus k, uh, we denote the vector after removing coordinates, uh, whose coordinates in this set, and that k we, by choosing only uh, coordinates in this set. And then we can represent, represent the original NK point density that correspond to some coalescent scheme as a sum of Gaussian densities times of integrals. So we have this Gersanov part. Then we have those particles that haven't survived and we simply integrate over them and we have particles that survived, but are not needed to calculate this uh, J part, because we are considered only J terminal points, and there can be more surviving particles. So in our case, we consider S, the coalescent scheme with K, surviving particles, and we don't need them all to hit J neighborhoods. Uh, in part, one part of this uh, proof is this exactly we can read of uh, the number of particles that hit these uh, sets. And instead consider only the events that at least one particle hits such sets. In particular, it will give our representation, simpler representation of the original density. Uh, and now I'm going to quickly recall this proof. It has never been discussed here, but it's very important for what follows. So given VU, we construct a coalescing system W tilde U. And then uh, we can use in the Kirsanov theorem for the Arati flow, rewrite the expression for the Arati flow in terms of this new exponentials, the conditions that we have exactly this coalescence scheme, and the number of particles that uh, hit this set times the number of particles that hit the next set in this sequence of sets. And again, uh, if we take uh, this notation, then we need to estimate the difference between the number and simply the indicators that there is at least one. And this can be estimated as follows. So this is what we have original that what we want to obtain. And by using some direct estimates, we obtain this sum. So we have three pro a product of three numbers here. And then this 
Gerson of part can be considered as a new function f of z, and then it can be integrated uh, in terms of which trajectories have survived and which trajectories are used to calculate this uh, heating events, because there are, in general, more surviving particles that are used to calculate the heating event, event that is the event that B plus epsilon Y G is non-empty. And if you recall, again, use this expression and substitute here simply the definition of what this number can be written in terms of this distinct set, we in the end arrive at something like this. So we have finite sum of all appropriate coalescence schemes. Then we choose for every coalescence scheme the number of particles that we need. And then we can collate the event that we hit everything, but because we have here additional part, additional factor, we got one additional set here. And this is simply uh, everything you sum in a compressed form. And this is the original condition. Then we can like get rid of this part because we can integrate some part of this expression. And because of the properties or good properties of this original Gossett exponential indicator S in terms of U and Y, we can conclude that this is a locally bounded function. So we can simply get rid of our estimate than this, and we have exactly simply Wiener process that hits something in the dimensions is, is j plus one. So the miss, the error of getting rid of the number of the particles that hit some set in the definition for n king point density is actually one or the higher. So we can then uh, use this definition and again, considering all possible configurations of surviving particles for this fixed coalescent scheme, we obtain something like this. So VU AS, we take all surviving particles and we take only L of them, which are needed to calculate this event. And we do not care about other particles. So this will give us Gaussian density at exactly this point, And this will give the integral with respect to the Gaussian density, and it doesn't like fall apart because there is this function that should be integrated with respect to everything. Here it is again. So this gives us uh, the idea of the proof. In, in case someone interested in details, uh, please check the thesis. So now we're returning to the original result. We arrive again at this expression where we can should work with probabilities. And the idea is exactly as is the case where there is no drift. So here y1, y1 plus epsilon, here's y2 plus epsilon, y2. Here are our points. And we ask about the possibility that the original flow hits 
this axis or y axis. But the uh, flow, the part that starts from the finite number does not. So in terms of dual flow, and the result of Riabo says that if we have the Brownian wave A, it's dual. Minus A. In terms of the dual flows, it means that dual flow go as this. So the original hits this B plus epsilon Y1. But the flows that start from this points to not. So instead of the uh, original difference, uh, we can consider something like this. But here, uh, we also want to exclude the possibility of any collision happening. And we do not allow multiple hits. So we do not, uh, if we consider now, in terms of x minus a, x minus a, y1, y1 plus epsilon, so on. We want these intervals after being pushed by the flow to this part to hit in between u m zero, u m one, u m two, and so on. At least once, because then the original difference. This is exactly what we have with the original expression. And in the case of zero drift, we can actually prove that we shouldn't consider the cases where two such intervals here should be minus a everywhere, obviously. Sorry. Uh, where two such intervals uh, hit in between the points. It's unlikely. So uh, we can instead simply consider the case where all others are irrelevant even. But if you want a sum, then we sh should impose the conditions. All others do not miss. So there is exactly one interval in the dual flow that misses. And exactly as in the original version uh, for zero drift, we need to get rid of a number of uh, summons. So we consider the case where there is no intersections and two different uh, intervals. Hit in between the same pair, mk, um, k plus one. So here, this interval goes, and this interval goes. Apparently, we consider the case where there is coalescence, which means that this particle and this particle merge. And now we consider the cases where two intervals miss. So this corresponds to the situation. This uh, corresponds to the situation where plus one.
So there are two hits in between. And again, we consider two situations where there is some coalescent in the system or there is no coalescence in the system. But in the end, what was crushing, for getting rid of all the terms, so what we are left is exactly what is stated in the formulation, is was uh, some properties of the Karel McGregor determinant in the following form. We need another representation of uh, finite dimensional density. So here we start again with the Brownian motion. Uh, delta n is a simplex. And we consider the Brownian motion that is killed upon leaving uh, the simplex dn. So essentially, rho a m t u in case a zero, this is simply Carlin McGregor determinant by definition. I have a, a small remark. This is not the same as a non colliding. Brownian motion in the literature because non-colliding Brownian motions are often understood as those conditioned not to collide. Uh, and here we simply kill when collision happens. So we consider the standard Cauchy problem uh, in the past simplex, uh, the zero boundary condition. Uh, and iterating its solution and use we obtain this representation. So given uh, n starting point, some coalescence scheme and gene j terminal points, we like uh, this is surface measure on the part of the boundary where coordinates g1 and j1 plus 1 are equal, exactly. This is where j2 and j two plus one coordinates are equal and so on. And we do not care when three or more coordinates are equal that irrelevant. And then we have this derivative and we iterate these derivatives by removing, the, the more we progress in our, with respect to our coalescence schemes, the more coordinates we remove. So this is simply, a removal of coordinates because they became equal. And the case of Carlin McGregor determinant, we have something like T nu set G Carlin McGregor and T X Y. But Carlin McGregor determinant is. Uh, This is some constant dependent on t. Van der Monde determinant x, van der Monde determinant y, and some fox function of x and y. And now, if you try to uh, push this derivative on this determinant, Obviously, it simply goes here. So this was the remote determinant is unchanged. And this one, the remote determinant is actually calculated in our case at y epsilon, which means that it exactly gives us epsilon to the power n. And if we return to the very beginning, this cancels this term. And if we arrive here, there is no derivative. And here we get our additional epsilon in the sense that uh, if you want to get it, for instance, from this term, uh, we consider all non-trivial uh, coalescence schemes that only these two can merge because this cannot. And by the definition of the density, we can write something like this. So the sum over all possible coalescence scheme. This is of size delta, this is of size delta, and this gives additional delta squared. So this whole expression is actually epsilon n constant 
delta form the, as a whole. So it disappears in the limit. Now uh, we want to uh, do the same in the case where drift is present. A motivating example would be as follows. So if we have linear drifts here, so this is like x k of t is simply b k of t, the linear process plus a k t. Uh, then the distribution of such system is actually known. Uh, known that this determinant can actually uh, be zero when, uh, for instance, a1 equals a2, but then you can uh, calculate the whole expression properly by taking the limit in a proper sense, so it's well defined. And if you try it now to push some derivative with respect to y, obviously, it's still going to recover um, as the same when the remonted determinant for x. So my uh, idea of on this root is as follows. So denote is a coalescing system derived from simply Wiener process, standard Wiener process with the dependent coordinates and starting point Q, and denote this is an absorbing So equals when there is no collision, I will write it simply as this, plus it disappears where any collision happens. Then actually we have the following. Almost everywhere, Carlin McGregor and XY, FY, where FY is mathematical expectation indicator, there is no collision. This simplified stochastic exponent conditional uh, on this. This is not what we uh, got in the original formulation, because in the original formulation, we considered something with simply uh, condition on the terminal behavior. And it was very useful because Everything here can be written as a function of the Brownian bridge and Vx, and Brownian bridge and Vx are independent as Gaussian forces. Obviously, it's no longer holds here. But still, what's the problem in this representation? Because if you want now to push derivative on this expression, it automatically should go on the corresponding part of Carlin McGregor determinant and this function, and it exists, which we know from the general theory of parabolic differential equation, but the problem is that we have this almost everywhere. And to get rid of the almost everywhere, we need a We need some good properties of this f. Uh, and why do we get this 
let me show very quickly uh, why we get this expression. No collision indicator. Uh, the original linear process it doesn't matter right now because there is no collision. Hits the corresponding set. And now simply by uh, rewriting this entails that. This is indicator and taking conditional expectation, we obtain our expression. But the problem is that this is only, only almost everywhere. Uh, two alternative. is G, A, N, T, X, Y. Again, almost everywhere is uh, G, K, M, T, N, G, Y, where G, Y is mathematical expectation. Uh, so if we know that, for instance, this G is a continuous function, we can get rid of this almost everywhere, and then we can use, proceed exactly in the case but drift is not present. And it seems, it seemed very natural for me that this should be an argument. You cannot calculate this explicitly as in the case where this was not present, because now W tilde, W hat are not independent. Is why, uh, but still, even from the point of the perturbation theory, this should be a good function. And actually, this is an alternative alternative approach to this problem that uh, I, I will be talking in fall. But I still think that there should be a self-contained argument here. Because this all happens on the set where there is no collisions. And adding this condition doesn't give much information. And like if you the set, this indicator, for instance, this is actually a function of eta and v xt. It can be written in terms of these expressions. But unfortunately, I'm still missing this final argument to conclude the proof. And that's all I wanted to tell today. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Maybe the, uh, maybe uh, somebody have questions or comments, please. Okay. Uh, then uh, let me ask you. Uh, you have statement about uh, the good approximation uh, for different uh, shifts a one, for example, and a two. Uh, is it uh, helping uh, to, to? Is it useful uh, to consider, for example, uh, pathwise linear drift? Because uh, you said that for linear drift, uh, people have something. So locally, for pathwise linear drift, it must work. Yeah? There is two, uh, like us. I, I think I, I have two, like, two parts of the answer. Mm -hmm. So the local behavior uh, is still unknown to me, but I hope to get some understanding of it. Uh, 
And secondly, like speaking locally, in some sense, it's in my opinion, it's exactly why I expect it to be a good function. Mm -hmm. So uh, you think that uh, uh, it is not necessary to modify uh, the shift A in order to make it uh, very good uh, in order to get something. Okay. I don't think so. Like, uh, I think that we have this result about the series representation. Mm -hmm. Now you can use this series representation in a general form that we haven't discussed in the seminar, but I hope I have it. Uh, yes, I, I remember. I remember. Uh, okay, uh, but uh, you see, uh, when you have uh, this expression uh, for f, uh, the existence of the good modification depends on two things. One is the uh, dependent structure between eta and uh, this uh, new processes uh, w is hat and uh, w. Uh, and uh, another one is related to the uh, structure of the stochastic integrals, which you have at the exponent. And in the exponent, you have stochastic integrals exactly with A. Uh, for example, it seems that in case when you can calculate it, for example, let's take such A that satisfies some eta formula, uh, some good formulas, yeah? Then uh, you can calculate and then uh, maybe uh, you can uh, just get a feeling. Okay, in this case, F is continuous for two. I, I, I think I understand what you are talking. So my problem is the suggestion that if you try to consider, so here we exactly the stochastic part, because there is no coalescence. This is exactly integral over the whole part, mm -hmm. the S, D, U, S, Minus a compensated one half. Yes. And even if you try to make some conclusion in terms of eta and mm -hmm. vt, the problem is that general we do not know much about the distribution of this expression, even if a ak is piecewise continuous. Uh, but uh, uh, let me uh, let me ask you: uh, Do you know something about the structure of the uh, distribution eta and w with uh, with uh, h? Uh, definitely, no. you you know because uh, uh, I think that the Brownian bridge is something which does not uh, which uh, survive up to the moment t. I think it can be organized. I uh, also think so, but I don't know right now how. Uh, but uh, and then uh, if we consider some special drifts where we have uh, some oh at least at least you can uh, even do some experiments for God that this is a density just have such uh, integrals uh, uh, with respect to winner process and ask about the conditional distribution and properties of this conditional distribution with respect to y I think that uh, you uh, will be able to check uh, some uh, good dependence like in Wasserstein distance and something uh, like estimate uh, the the behavior with respect to y, then you can go back and say that, uh, okay, we also have the functional which can be approximated by the good functionals, then we have the uh, continuity. Mm -hmm. But I think something can be done when this is considered. Is yes, considered. yes, uh, surely. Yeah. But when we add this, I do not know what to do. Okay. Uh, well, uh, I think it also can be uh, can be done. Uh, at least uh, you can uh, you can see what happened when we uh, make conditioning of a uh, multi-dimensional vinyl process on coalescing. Uh, yes, and uh, then uh, then you can try to do something. Uh, you mean what? Uh, like we know exactly the distribution of the vinyl process is conditioned not to coalesce, right? Yes. Yes. Exactly. So may, maybe then I should give up on bridges and forget. Uh, 
uh, yes, uh, yeah, it just changed uh, this bridges by uh, new object, which is related to this new process W with cat, and then uh, see what happens. I think that uh, you are right, F has continuous modification. Yeah. It should have, like. Yeah, uh, yeah. and uh, uh, it definitely must have a probability uh, proof. Yes, this is what I want. I wanted a self contained proof. Like this yeah, yes, uh, and uh, it's ready. Okay. So, so thank you very much. Thank you very much again. And uh, uh, Georgi, who will be the next speaker? Uh, next speaker will be Alexander Weiss. Okay. Then we will speak again about some measure value process. Okay. Uh, thanks, everybody, and see you next week. Bye. Goodbye. Okay, bye.